Howdy. Um, I found a, a pretty interesting way to build a nose cone like this um, and actually found this on the SolidWorks forum. Uh, somebody asked how to build it and there were a couple solutions uh, that had like a singularity in one way, shape or form. And then a guy by the name of Andrew Jackson came up with this uh, solution where he built like a ribbon, four-sided ribbon, trimmed it back and then patched it up and he got a really good result. Um, he also made a SolidWorks video of it that I will link in the description below. And I figured I built this in Rhino. Uh, the workflow is different enough to where I, I think it's good to just kind of go through it. Um, so uh, let's see how, how far we can get. I'm going to start off with uh, just building that um, surface that, that does have a singularity in it. And if I just put this, it's, I'm just going to make this temporary. You can see here, if I turn on the control points, that all the control points converge to this end here. And that's actually not super desirable. Um, you know, downstream operations can cause big headaches. Here you can see there's like all sorts of weird stuff going on when we do curvature analysis. Now, if I try to offset this, um, this guy, and flip those, then you can see that this surface folds over on itself and there's all sorts of weird stuff happening. So, you know, this is just not a very good solution, um, in my opinion. And so in order to build that ribbon that doesn't have a singularity, we need another profile that's going through this segment of the curve, this curve segment, and that curve segment. And so here I'm going to actually hide the original curve. I've already made a copy of it. I need to um, split this guy out um, in two sections. So I'm going to do that now, split that out. And I'm going to use a point. And so I'm going to split that right there. And so now I have um four separate sections and these i'm also gonna split out so select those and copy those to my layer and now i'm going to hide both the originals and i have four curves now and that allows me to run a cross section that will intersect all these um, curves so csec and I like to go clockwise, so I'm going to one, two, three, four. I actually need to change my C plane to the uh, right view. Enter, and then I'm going to go from there to there, accept. And so now I have um, uh, another cross section here, and this is two curves. They're actually like tapered. It's sort of a, a mimics a, a nose of, a, of an airplane or of a glider. And so it's not actually symmetrical, but we can run a sweep through this with all the uh, profiles that we have. So sweep two, accept that. I have to chain the edges because these are two separate edges. So I'm going to select both of those, accept. And that's my second rail, accept. And then I got one curve. Oh, actually uh, messed that up. I got to split those first. Split with a point. And we're going to go from there to there. Repeat that with a point from there to there. Repeat that with a point from there to there. Repeat that with a point from there to there. So now we can run the sweep two. Chain edges. And again, one, two, accept. Accept. One, two. Oh, no, I did that wrong actually. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you why. So chain edges, one, two, accept, accept. I'm going to start at the top here, one, two, three, four, accept. And so now it's building this, and because I started at the top, my surface seam is actually going to be at the top here. And I previously I started here, which puts the surface seam there, which is actually causing headaches later on, so I don't want to do that. Um, by default, it creates an open loft, but we can do a, a closed sweep, and so we accept that. Put that guy on my surfaces layer. Oh, I already selected it. Change object layer. So now I have this on my surfaces layer. Okay. Escape out of that. Right view. And I'm going to change to wireframe here for a second. Now I want to offset this guy. Offset. And. Oh, that's not the one I want. Let's 
pick the original one, offset. So I pick the original one, offset, and we're going 22 in. I want it to be just inside of this surface so that I cut off the top of that. Now you can see that because this is an accurate offset, there's a ton of control points. Um, and I'm going to rebuild this curve to have a little less control points in it. I want to be right around a hundredth of a deviation. And so I'm going to start with 20, see where we're at. Uh, here at 16, that's about right. So, and I'm going to accept that. So now I have a simpler curve, and the simpler curve will create a less complex curve when we trim back this surface. So now I need a few extra lines um, to create my trim profile. I want to go from there, perpendicular to that, and I want to go from there, perpendicular to that. And so now I'm going to trim those guys back. Those are my cutting profiles, trim that back, trim that back, and then I'm going to join these guys, except, and so now I can trim back that surface with this guy, and I need to do that twice because there's a seam, and if I turn, go back to shaded with edges, 3D view, now I have this profile that is open, and then here, I no longer need these guys, the yellow ones, um, because I need complete curves uh, for this, for what I'm doing next. And I want to have a helper surface that's going to give me tangency across the center line. And for that, I'm going to use this guy. I'm going to set surfaces current. And then I'm going to extrude this curve. And that can be an arbitrary amount. Um, it just needs to be. Um, away from the, the center plane here so that I can have a surface in here that is tangent um, to this surface. And I only need part of the surface so I can split it back to these intersections. I'm going to do that right now. So split that back. And I'm going to do that with an ISO curve. And it's this one. And I want to split it back to that guy. That we can delete. Repeat the split with an ISO curve. And so right there, and we can get rid of that as well. Delete. So save that. I <laughs> I have a habit of saving things pretty pretty frequently, so I don't need those profiles anymore. So now I just need to fill this uh, section here. Um, see, there's a couple curves in here. I've tried um, a couple variations here and didn't delete all the uh, curves. So I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to delete that. So here I have my uh, original curve, and the one that we trim back is a little short now because we, with this trim curve, we trimmed the surface back a little bit. So that I can get rid of, that I can get rid of, that I can get rid of. Actually, I can get rid of all this stuff on this side because I'm going to mirror it over. And so now I have this guy. And I'm going to copy that to my uh, temporary surfaces. And then I'm going to hide this. And so now I can split this guy at the edge here. If I can type. And I'm going to do that with a point. I want to split this curve at that point. And then I don't need that. So now I'm set up with a helper surface, uh, this surface, and that guy. And if I isolate all of them, it'll make it a little bit easier to create my, my surface here. And I want to build a uh, network surface in here um, that will allow me to set my boundary at, uh, conditions. And so I select all these guys and that guy. And so now I get a preview. And on the A, I would like to have curvature. B, I would like to have curvature. C uh, is tangent because I'm just going over the center line. And then D, I would like to have curvature as well. And then when we accept that result, we get this. So now I'm going to select the curves and hide those for now. This I no longer need. We can get rid of that. And then if I, you can already see that the highlight travels through that pretty nicely. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, so if I 
join those together and run a zebra over that that's pretty good like it's not a perfect result but for just a couple minutes of modeling and kind of going quick that's a pretty damn uh, close to perfect result um, so i'm pretty happy with that and explode that back out look at the front view and then we can mirror that over mirror that over start a mirror plane point from there to there and join everything back up and so now if i turn on the isoparms you'll see that my isoparms are really well behaved and if i were to try and offset this i probably wouldn't have any problems now if i go too far it'll still fail because uh, the curvature will get too too small and and the uh, control points will self-intersect um, you know, but I have a pretty good feeling that we can offset this with no problem. Offset. Polyserve, right? Offset. Serve. That guy. And I want to go, let's say that we want to make this part three millimeters thick to the inside. Uh, and I want it to be a solid and say yes so i hadn't actually done this before but you can see here that we get a really nice uh there's a shaded uh, it's the wrong shaded shaded with edges so if we you know we get a really nice if i turn off the uh, iso isoparms we get a really nice review um i think you know the i hadn't seen this technique like this specifically before and I think Andrew Jackson did a really good job coming up with this technique and um, even though the workflow in Rhino is a little bit different than SolidWorks I thought it was worth sharing and uh, you know it's probably a helpful technique for people that do surfacing work so there you have it cheers